Leon here. Today we'll be looking at how to get started in Guild Wars 2 and what you need to know to survive the first 20 odd levels. Firstly, let's take a look at the world, or as it's known in game, Tyria. It's pretty big and made up of lots of separate zones. They each have clear level indications on them so you don't accidentally wander into somewhere a little too high level for you. Each zone I've found so far to be very distinct and have a lot of variety when it comes to things to do. Talking of things to do, there are a lot of things in Guild Wars 2. Each map, as you can see, has a set amount of tasks, points of interest, waypoints, skill challenges and vistas. Doing each of these grants you experience that you can use to level up your character. The tasks are heart-shaped icons on your map. Each of these indicate a person that has something for you to do and completing it will give you experience. Points of interest are rather self-explanatory. These are areas of the map that have something special about them. Mostly they're either where the enemy camp is or some special landmarks. Waypoints are one of the most important things for you to collect whilst you're wandering around and exploring. These act as portals that you can teleport between for a small fee and if you die you'll be portaled to one of your choosing, again for just a small fee. The skill challenges are a great way to get extra skill points that are used to unlock skills which I'll explain a little later on. Lastly, there's the vistas. These are little viewpoints that sometimes are difficult to get to and they just give you a small little overview, a little artistic view of the cities, the towns, etc. similar to what you find in Assassin's Creed games. You can find these areas by talking to a scout and they'll locate the ones nearby to them on the map for you. Around the world you'll often bump into some events. These are large scale battles that happen around certain areas. They're optional and if you don't want to take part you can just stay away. But if you do help out you'll be rewarded for your efforts. Here's some footage of when a giant attacked one of the towns and loads of people joined in to try to take it down. While we're watching this we'll talk about the combat. It's one of the best bits of Guild Wars 2. It's fast and allows you to always be doing something. The combat revolves around using different skills and the majority of your skills will be dependent on your weapon choice. You can change your weapon and as you do so the first five slots will change too. Two handed weapons change all five slots where one handed weapons change only the first three and the off hand changes the final two. To start with, you only have one skill unlocked for each weapon, but the more you use them, the more skills become available to you. Do not worry though, it only takes about 15 or so kills to unlock all the skills for a single weapon, but try avoiding anything very difficult if you only have one skill to use. Once you have your weapon ready, all you have to do, and this is obviously dependent on your class, is run up to an enemy and activate one of the skills. I am playing primarily as a, a sort of a melee based character and I try have to get close otherwise I will miss if I activate the skills. As you can see they do activate regardless of where you are so you do have to pay attention to the battlefield and unlike other games they won't let you use an ability unless you're in range. This one certainly will. Once you've leveled your character and got a few skill points, you might want to know what to do with them all. It's fairly simple, but I do suggest taking your time to think of what kind of character you want to create before you spend them all. Each of the skill points costs a certain amount, and that's indicated just below the skill itself. You need five skill points in the first row before you can move to the next. By spending the points, you can then assign the skills to one of the seven to nine slots so remember to pick them carefully. You can also get to pick larger traits and these give major boosts in five areas dependent on your class. Again, think before you act 
but if you do realize you've made a mistake, you can change them for a small fee. If you're struggling to get armor or weapons, or other things for that matter, you can always look into making them yourself with the profession system. Gathering materials is easy. Simply purchase the tools you wish to use and go out harvesting or, or wood or anything you fancy. Once you have the materials, it's a simple matter of turning them into something. To get more patterns or plans, all you have to do is talk to one of the trainers and they'll happily teach you. PvP or player vs player is a big part of a lot of MMO games and this one's no different. However, Guild Wars 2 does something that I think is very handy for those of you that want to dive right into the action. Rather than having to level up a character, you can boost one right to the max level and start owning noobs straight away. Unfortunately, I hadn't done the tutorial so I couldn't show you any of that footage just yet, but I'll make sure to get some PvP action up shortly. There's also world vs world fights, which are huge server vs server battles, and I'll be making a video of those shortly as well. Well that's it for the very basics of Guild Wars 2. If you have any questions or wish to know more, please feel free to comment below. Any feedback is appreciated as well. Thanks for watching. Bye!